G'day ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Scotty49 here with you once again for another installment in the Warhammer 40,000 for the New Guys series. Now, as we continue going through this series, we're starting to cover a lot more factions, which has been awesome to look at some of the various factions in the game of Warhammer 40,000. And today we're going to continue our look at the Tau Empire, where we're going to be looking at the core rules for them and what impacts how they play on the tabletop and can inform some decisions in later videos for our look at the Tau Empire. But ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into it, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed on the channel as of late. Thank you so much for joining us here and I really hope that you are enjoying the content on the channel. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty, so the Tau Empire have got a selection of core rules that are used to differentiate them from other factions in the game of Warhammer 40,000. Now, these core rules are the following. They've got Cadre Command, Independent Power, Philosophies of War, Battle Suits, and Markalites. So first up, we're going to be looking at Cadre Command. Now, the Cadre Command rule is similar to other detachment restrictions around certain units that many other codexes have, but there is a difference here, which is why I'm mentioning it compared to some of the other codexes where I haven't mentioned it. Now, the Cadre Command Detachment ability allows you to take a maximum of one Tower Commander per detachment unless it is a Farsight Enclave's detachment. If it is a Farsight Enclave's detachment, then you can take a maximum of two Commanders per detachment. So that's something that really does differentiate them from some of the other core rules in the games related to some of these hate heavier HQ choices that can be taken. The second core rule we're looking at is independent power. Now, unlike most other Tau Seps, the Farsight Enclaves and the Ethereal Cast do not, and I mean do not, get along and disagree on tactical decisions, which was the original reasoning for Commander Farsight to actually split away from the main Tau Empire this rule is a representation of that division. Now, for a detachment with this rule, you cannot include any ethereal models in the detachment. So, really leaning into the fluff with that one there, but also makes a lot more sense now why you can take two commanders rather than one, because generally what you see in other Tau armies is they'll take one commander and an ethereal generally. Now, the third core rule for the Tau Empire that we're going to look at is the philosophies of war. Now, the Tau Empire have got two distinct ways that they engage in warfare, known as the Montcar, the Killing Blow, as it's translated, or the Kaoyon, which is the Patient Hunter. The philosophies of war rule represents these two methods of Tau warfare. Now, if every unit in your army, excluding Tau Auxiliary, Supreme Commanders and unaligned units are from the same Tau Sept, then at the start of the battle, when you determine who has first turn, you select either the Montcar or the Kaoyon Tactical Philosophy to gain the benefits of. Now, only Tau Empire units, excluding Tau Auxiliaries, will actually gain these benefits during your games. If you select the Montcar, philosophy of war, it is active during battle rounds 1 to 3 and provides the following benefits. Each time a unit makes a normal move or an advanced move until the end of the shooting phase, they count as having remained stationary. Now, ranged attacks made during these turns that target the closest eligible enemy unit gain an additional minus 1 AP and can re-roll ones to wound if they are within the following ranges. For battle round one, if they're within 18 inches. For battle round two, if they're within 12 inches. And for battle round three, within nine inches. However, if you select the Kaoyon philosophy of war, it is active from battle rounds three to five and provides the following benefits. Units are able to make ranged attacks in a turn in which they make a fallback move with a minus one to hit penalty. Range attacks made during these turns that target the closest eligible target within 12 inches of that unit that is not within engagement range of any enemy units or did not make a fallback move this turn gets additional hits on the following unmodified to hit roll number. Battle round three is on an unmodified to hit roll of six. Battle round four 
it is on, a, on an unmodified to hit roll of 5 plus, and Battle Round 5 is on an unmodified to hit roll of 4 plus. Now, I will mention that there are some changes in the balanced stars slate relating to the philosophies of War for Tower. So, as you do play them a bit more and you know play against different people, some people may play with the balanced starter slate, others may not. So in your early games, you might not want to play with the balanced data slate. And then once you know your codex and can keep on playing with them quite well and start to really expand your army further and further and start to get to higher points level games, say up to 2000 points, and you're playing more match play, that's when the balanced data slate is likely to come into effect for you. It is purely up to when you actually bring that into effect for your playing. Now, the fourth core rule that we're going to be looking at is battle suits. Now, battle suits come in a large variety of designs and sizes from smaller stealth suits right up to the big riptide and storm surge battle suits now battle suits have the ability to make ranged attacks whilst an enemy unit is within engagement range of them but they must target the enemy unit they are engaged with this can even occur when there are other friendly units within engagement range of the same enemy unit now if a battle suit has got more than one ranged weapon it can still target a unit that's not within engagement range however it can only make those attacks if the enemy units it's within engagement range of is completely destroyed first battle suits that make range attacks with heavy weapons do suffer a minus one to hit penalty for firing them at a target whilst an enemy unit is within engagement range of them so bear that in mind for the various battle suits that you can take in your tower armies and the fifth core rule for the Tau Empire that we're going to be looking at today is Markalites. Now, Markalites have always been a unique rule for the Tau Empire, which represents their ability for some of their units to mark a target to be destroyed to help other units from their army be more accurate with their devastating firepower. For a unit to use their Markalites, they must perform the following action, which is called Fire Markalites. Thematically enough, one or more Markalite units can start to perform this action at the start of your movement phase, including aircraft Markalite units. The action is complete at the start of your next shooting phase, and if successful, for each model in the unit that is equipped with one or more Markalites, select one unit within 36 inches that would be an eligible target for a model to shoot at if selected to shoot. Roll a d6 for each model and on a 3 plus the enemy unit targeted gets a marker light token. When a vehicle or drone performs this action, its unit can move without the action failing. However, if every other model in that unit isn't a vehicle or drone keyword model, it is treated as not being equipped with any marker lights. Now, each time a tower unit excluding tower auxiliary units is selected to shoot, each time they make a ranged attack against an enemy unit with one or more Markalite tokens, it gets plus one to hit rolls for that attack. After the unit has finished making those attacks, for each enemy unit targeted by those attacks, remove one Markalite token from that enemy unit. At the end of the shooting phase, you remove all remaining Markalite tokens from enemy units, and you do the same process in your following turn. So you can't stack up Markalite tokens until a unit's dead. It's just pretty much a turn on turn basis rule. But ladies and gentlemen, that covers it for the core rules of the Tau Empire. Alrighty everyone, well I hope that you enjoyed this brief look at the core rules that are the foundation of the Tau Empire in terms of how they play on the tabletop and that might inform some decisions in terms of the starting the army options and the next step options that we also talk about coming up in the next couple of videos for the Tau Empire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you did enjoy this video or you have any thoughts on these core rules, feel free to let me know down in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you do want to see more content from me here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe, turn on that notification bell, so that way you're informed as to when I release more videos here on the channel. And if you do want to engage in more live conversation with me, Whilst I am live over on Twitch, make sure you check out my Twitch page where I do stream on Tuesday mornings and Friday nights, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, where we do hobby streams, we do some live games from time to time, and I do travel across the southern eastern parts of the country to bring you some live tournament coverage from the Australian 40k tournament scene. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.